hello, hello. Welcome to a brand new show. Uh, this is 100% bite-sized garbage reviews. Uh, I'm sure everyone here watching has been a big fan of the previous review sets, um, but we found out that trying to consume All so garbage. much garbage, yes, yeah, so much garbage at once is painful and there's it's too much suffering. Really. Yeah. So now the new plan is we're going to do bite-sized chunks and uh, we're going to review cards as they come out. So, right. yeah, so I'm Sea Weezy and uh, my Joining co-host. Him, as always, is Sea Weezy. Yeah, as Sea Weezy, uh, both of us. And we are here reviewing Rastakhan's Rumble. So, yeah, so uh, cool, cool theme as usual with uh, the Hearthstone sets. I think that's one thing that I think everyone can agree they do well is theme their sets. Yeah, they theme their sets very well. The art's always going to be top tier. I'm sure yeah. when I hear the voices, they're going to be great. Uh, yeah. They always knock that part out of the park. Uh, the gameplay is probably just going to be not good. <laughs> right. Um, um, so, you know, one thing I think we need to start doing is uh, retroactively applauding cards that go above and beyond on the, like, voice line mm -hmm. aspect. Like, I know for a while we raved about uh, Buy One Funnel Cakes. That was really above and beyond. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think lately, uh, the Shroom Brewer really just... Oh, yeah, like, the Shroom Brewer. And even in every language, it's, like, all different in, like, Russian and Korean and stuff. They, they, it sounds great. Yeah, so uh, they really just killed it. On a different level with Shroom Brewer. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a good card from Boomstay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard that's to think of any. Tough. Yeah, that's going to okay. be tough. So, first up with Druid, they got one whole card. It's a, oh, yeah. It's special. And Well, they really have zero cards, I yeah. think. Savage Striker. Yeah. So, so, the thing with this guy, um, I think it's generally an interesting idea to take a card that sees no play and then put it on a reasonably statted minion mm -hmm. to try to make it more appealing basically maybe you have a cool effect but it's just an effect that will never be worth a whole card right right because that certainly can exist right we have a cool effect but it's really just not worth the card so your options are really constrained if you want it to be standalone like you can't really make things zero mana usually because they're just broken yeah a whole um, bunch of other effects and stuff Right. So then the other option is just put it on a minion with vanilla stats. So that way um, it's like kind of free value. Um, this, though, is, I think, worse than Savagery. Yeah. It's very sort of strange that it's actually worse than Savagery because the thing about Savagery is bad, but it only costs one. Right. Like, well, the problem with Savagery is it's hard to give your guy an attack that's relevant. Right. The and problem with Savagery isn't that, like, it costs one or isn't value i mean if it's one mana deal like four damage it would be great and i think four is kind of the number because you have to set it up so it kind of needs to have a high high payoff right, um, right. and what this does nothing to help that <laughs> so no. yeah so it's just 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 not good i think it's just horrible really I, it's not even good in arena particular i mean you'll no. play it yeah it's, it's just not blank even, yeah it's it's kind of shocking how not good this is i mean okay Obviously, they could print some awesome cards that give your hero a bunch of attack. But in that case, I am willing to say that Savagery will be the first card in, and then maybe you want this as copies three and four if somehow they printed a bunch of stuff that made that happen. Uh, combos with uh, Twig of the World Tree. There we go. I was discovering yeah, combos boom. already. <laughs> boom. Bl right. No, Blinktron in, uh, in Wild. There you go. <laughs> Get him. Got him. Uh, all right. At least you well, reprint yeah, That's a disaster. Okay. Hunter, okay. All right. Real I'm excited. Cards now. I'm excited because I think, I think, they actually introduced a mechanic that's going to lead to interesting gameplay. It's very rare that I say that in the history of Hearthstone. Yeah, we're gonna we're coming on uh, very quickly here. The new keyword for the set. Yeah. And normally this is the part where I start ranting about how bad everything is, but I think Overkill is actually pretty clever. I think it's going to be pretty fun. I mean, this card looks really underpowered and is way worse than it looks on a first read, but yeah. the mechanic of overkill, I think, is good because it rewards anticipating what your opponent can do and playing around it um, 
in in ways that I think is relevant and interesting. Like sometimes, if you if you're trying to play around a baited arrow, you might not play a card. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's pretty exciting for Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah. It's um, rare. That's yeah, right. It's rare. So, um, I mean, again, I think this card is way weaker than it first seems, um, because ultimately, it's kind of just bane of doom, which. With minor, the very minor upside of it can go face, which you know is a little bit better in Hunter than it would be in pretty much any other class. But eh, yeah, it's not it's really still good. for five. It's not, yeah, I mean, I mean, if it kills him, it kills him, right? But uh, Bane of Doom can actually go face. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, well, this does three, yeah. not two. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, again, you have steady shot, so mm-hmm. something. But um, you know, it, it's I, I, I wish. This card was a little stronger, maybe somehow, but um, regardless, I, I, for the record, it could even see a little bit of play. But it's not good; though. it's just whatever. Like if it sees play, it's just like medium. Yeah, the, I like the art. You can see oh, the yeah, devil no, sword in the uh, background. I think they they nailed it on that one. Yeah, no, I think, and I I really I, I'm excited to see what they can do with overkill. I mean, they'll probably just fuck it up, but um, I think overkill is a good mechanic, and I'd like to see overkill on all sorts of stuff. Like, I really hope they really push the boundaries. Like, imagine a card like Lightning Storm with Overkill. Oh, that's really something. exciting. You know, like, you could yeah. do, you could really do some, like, really increase the complexity of a board state. Which I think Hearthstone like desperately needs. Yeah, the more you absolutely. Have. And then we have... Right uh, now, I would say, okay, so actually, that, that's... Something worth talking about. Um, since the dawn of Hearthstone, um, you know, we've both been playing since mm-hmm. vanilla and beta even. Um, I would say that the complexity has certainly increased. There's no doubt about that. But really, where it went from like very low skill to maybe some like solitaire-ish skills in the sense that there's certainly ways to sequence your plays more optimally and like kind of do combos in a more effective way, especially with some some classes and decks like priests and stuff you have to know a lot of combo kind of um sequencing and minutia but there's still not that much interacting with the opponent really in hearthstone right there's not that many like i think one of the only examples of a time where you really have to consider what the opponent's doing is like frost Lich, Jane. Mm-hmm. and playing around having one life things or them being able to make your things one life or make their own things one life, whatever but um, that's like one of the only examples in recent history where you really care about what your opponent's doing. And other than that, you just kind of want to do your stuff as well as you can. So I think Overkill could really expand on caring about what your opponent does. I think that'll just add a lot of fun to the game. Because I always found, uh, this is from Magic, but I always found playing versus a blue deck and as a blue deck, the the most interesting part, like playing around counter spells and stuff. Right. And trying to bait it out because that i felt like that was like the most interaction so. right yeah absolutely and um since this game doesn't have counters which for the record i actually approve of i think it's actually outdated to have uh non asynchronous gameplay i think it's just the way forward it's just so much better like literally being able to take your turn then tab out and do whatever the hell you need to do is so much better than needing to constantly check priority and whatever yeah but, the um, priority check system is just yeah, it's just a disaster. <laughs> that's uh, that's another video, though. All right, right. That's baited arrow. So high yeah. hopes, so yeah. far. Uh, next we have spring paw, which is basically a reprint of uh, a different card. I think it's better though. Oh no, it's actually worse. It's, it's well, it reminds me of the alley cat, but the difference yeah. is you get rush, and the trade off is you have to pay the one mana again. Right. Yeah. Um, I, which sounds about fair mm-hmm. like in terms of like probably they're roughly equally good and i mean people played alley cat alley cat was pretty good yeah so yeah. i, like I mean i'm sure you this will be played it's just whatever though um a little weird that a card with a unique name and that looks kind of like a unique thing is a common mm-hmm. shouldn't it be like a rare at least yeah doesn't he look like spring paw the gladiator yeah like yeah. I, it just seems weird that it's a common yeah I don't know. That's a like, usually cards with like names like that like Aren't like baited arrow is common, right? It's right. like anyone could sense. be shooting the baited arrow, but like spring paw is like a unique. He looks like a person. Yeah, unique character. I don't know. Yeah. It's a little weird. 
All right. That's it for Hunter. Mage. We got two. Yo, okay. The big legendary. Yo. So, um, I think, <sighs> first off, it would have been way more hype if you could add a copy of this to your opening hand. Let's get that right. Yeah, it's got to be. Like, is that even unfair? I mean, yeah, it's infinite value, but, like, you kept an 8-drop, and it's, like, really weak when you play Like, it's really negative tempo when you play it. Yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five for 8. But, like, what yeah. are you going to follow it up with? So, like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, that would destroy some kind of, like, super hard control mirror. Mm -hmm. But, like, okay, screw you. How about that? Like, screw you and your super hard control mirror. Like, I don't know. If you can't call me out if I'm playing this card, come on. I mean, my, my thought process there is it would be hype to try to bait people into keeping this when they absolutely shouldn't. Yeah. But, like, you literally, this card says you have to mulligan this or you're dumb, right? Yeah. Because it does, there's no reward. Like, it's, it's a huge downside. Oh, yeah. Keep it. Big major downside. It changes it from what, like, maybe It's either a draw three. three or a draw four to a draw two or draw three. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So, um, it's... so, yeah, you have to mulligan it, which I think is sad. I think it should be the opposite. I think they should bait you into trying to keep it and be ultra greedy. Yeah, and that um, also, like, they removed a decision. Right? Right, right exactly. Yeah. Now, the, yeah, right. There's, there's only one course of action with this card. Yeah. That's, Which is mulligan it. That's and then hope to destroy it late. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is some, there's still some interesting stuff going on mulligan wise. Uh, I like that. Um, in general, I think it's good to add um, an element of uh, not just going for the best cheap tempo cards in your mm -hmm. opening hand. Because if you're in a control mirror or what you presume to be a control mirror, you'd want to keep fat cards because that way you double up on them when you eventually draw this um so that's cool but um so I, I wish there was more things like this but this guy in and of itself i mean i i guess if the control if you really want it to be control you play this but i mean you can never it's literally horrible disaster against aggro so it might not even get played by anybody yeah i could see i could see him being played in like a tournament where you're more likely to yeah. see control decks or something, and, like, not right. on ladder. Right. And then we have, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. It's, um, uh, I took my glasses off. This is, uh, Cold Wraith? Cold Wraith, is that you? Oh, hold on. You know? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's it, it is Cold Wraith in the sense that you play it on turn three, uh, and it has no text. <laughs> um, yeah, three mana, three, four. Uh, cool. Um, Maybe Brutal and Arena, not even remotely close to constructive play. Even if you consider that you could play it in Odd Mage, like, just play Frostlitz, Jaina. Yeah. Do that. Like, uh, I like really... the problem is, like, if it's drawing cards, it's probably way late in the, later in the game, and the fact that it's a 3-mana three 3-4 three, is totally useless. Because 3-mana three 3-4s three, in late game are just not. They just don't matter. Um, so, basically, this card's not good. And it's it's not it doesn't do anything unique because we already have like this exact thing like that happens all the time with Frostless Jaina so it's not even like it's creating some new kind of gameplay. No, yeah, it's it's, it's sort of sad to waste art like that because that art is. Oh yeah, and the gold one you already know is going to be, in, and the, you know the voice line for that guy. Is. Yeah, holy moly, the teeth. Yeah, oh yeah, extra spooky. I right. the pyromaniac looks like more like a legendary than Hex Lord Malachris. He looks kind of, yeah. Malachris looks kind of lame. And he has, like, that, like, dinky little fire. Like, ooh, yeah. boop. Look he also looks, like, scared. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Is that the aggro deck coach for me? <laughs> 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 oh, shit, it's Hunter. Oh, no. Yeah, it's Hunter. Oh, I guess I'm not being played. <laughs> All right. Back to, on to Paladin. We got Why three do they cards. keep making these, these Paladin cards that are, like, unplayable spells that do a thing that used to be really powerful on, like, a good card? <laughs> like the first it was rebuke, right? Yep. And now there's this. Like Time out. Your uh, hero's immune to your next turn. Like Okay, literally the only thing that does is give you a turn to do some kind of nonsense combo. And Paladin is like totally not the nonsense combo class. Well, they have one nonsense combo. What's that? It's called Holy Wrath. Okay. And you I can guess. you can put uh, Shrivala back in your deck. Mm. So that's the combo. 
I guess. Yeah, that's the, that's it. That's so oh. it's. Uh, I actually think that's a horrible design, though, because yeah. how is that any fun? Yeah, like here. So they removed ice block because it sort of basically sucked to play against, and it sort of warped yeah. mage. And if this car, if timeout turns out to be good, which it could, maybe. Um, I mean, it literally does one thing. It says, yeah. like, it just, I get one more turn to do my one kill com- like one turn kill combo. Yeah, so it's going to be the exact same problem where the either the Paladin times you out and kills you by Holy Wrathing you twice with Shrivala, yeah. or right. you just win no problem. So yeah. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get why you'd print this card. Um, I also don't get, like, if you're going to print this, shouldn't it cost, like, a shit ton? Not three, because that gives you seven mana to, like, set up your combo, which yeah, seems exactly. like a lot. That's a ton. Also, it's a common. Why the fuck is this a common for Arena? Uh, well, like, no, that doesn't matter anymore, right? Oh, yeah. Rarities literally don't exist anymore in Arena. Oh, it's right, all, right, It's all about, like, their own, like, internal grading of power level, which is such a weird... <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, they're literally, like, telling you what the good cards are. Like, it's like some sort of weird self-defining I don't know it's they because they don't know they can't do rarities properly so right <laughs> oh man yeah so timeout I think I'm gonna give a big F I mean it's just not gonna lead to any fun no either it's gonna just do nothing or it's gonna lead to something that makes you really sad now the next card I really like this card I feel you like... know I really want to like it yeah. um, but the like the fact of the matter is if like this is one of those things where when you print hard counters in your game, especially in the base set, which will always be around. Yeah. If this card ever got good, everyone just plays two spell breakers and now your deck's unplayable. Yeah. Congratulations. Or the odd the odd decks play two owls. Which right. they probably yeah. do anyways. Yeah. But, like, yeah, if this card gets good, you just play your polymorphs, your hexes, and your silences, and then this deck can never win, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it can literally yeah. never win. Like, it can't do anything. So, the fact that you have hard counters in your game um, means that you can never even design something like this, really. Because all this says is, I mean, presumably, if your deck doesn't contain any of that, you'll probably just lose to this every time. Right. It'll probably just steamroll the fuck out of you. Like, it, you know, they're going to play it and buff it once, and it's going to be, like, kind of okay. Then they're going to immediately tutor back, because there's, like, 18 tutors for this card. <laughs> um, and then you die. Uh, the end. Yes. And if it was... If it was more like um, Immortal Prelate, uh, any any spells enchanted this card enchants every Immortal Prelate, or something. Yeah, it, it'd almost be like... It would almost be better if it was, like, you could play four of this in your deck. Yeah. And when you buff one, it buffs the ones in all other zones. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and that would dodge. That would be really powerful, but yeah. Maybe. Maybe it would be super duper awesome. Yeah. And but, broken. Um, that would be, that'd be interesting. Um, but, yeah, as it stands, like, this card, if you're not packing tech hate for it, you probably just die. And if you are, then you did it. Yeah. Um, especially because you play this. And then you also get to play that legendary that has never seen play, but that just recasts every buff. Like, oh yeah. Like <laughs> that's you're just gonna get like spike ridge steed on this thing is just stupid, right? Exactly. Like it's. Yeah. yeah. So, next up, we have a le- legendary that is only gonna be cast to. I feel like it's only gonna be holy wrath combos, but maybe not. But Shrivala the well, tiger. Well, I think what people don't realize because they look at this and see that it's really powerful when it's in play because mm-hmm. it is really I mean it's very good if Zilliax is like mediocre to, to good I mean I guess it's good um, I mean, not just mediocre it's like actively pretty good yep. then this is like insanely brutal mm-hmm. but um, you I don't think people realize that Paladin can't actually play this this is a lot of that's a lot of mana on spells man that's uh, like I don't even, like I think they're gonna have to print a bunch of spells that even allows you to play this because as it stands, what would you even play to even get like 20 mana worth? Like, what are you even playing? Lay on hands is like unplayable. Yeah. It's not very good. Um, then there's like two consecrate. You can play avenging wrath. You can play two avenging wrath, two consecrate. That is 20. If you played all of like two copies of each of those, that's a lot. 
that's really slow. This card's really slow. And the problem is it's at its best versus aggro. So uh, I actually think it's not really going to do much of anything. Yeah, the only the only thing I see this in is what I was mentioning before is the Holy Wrath combo deck. So or or you could do some cheesy with uh, the Switcheroo card, the you know the draw. Oh yeah, the swap. Uh, yep. Yeah, because then you know if you get this for like two mana or whatever, then... it's a little bit better. Yeah, and then <laughs> I... yeah, you have some un uncastable spell in your hand, but whatever. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so it's this one, not it looks hype, but I don't think it will be. I don't know why they chose the, it's such like like look at these three cards these all are completely different archetypes and don't get me wrong I mean it's great to not just make one archetype in an expansion for a class but like these are like these cards can never go in the same deck like no oh no well actually you might see time out of the same deck the combo yeah. deck okay I guess Spike Ridge Steed is a spell. But yeah. I, no, if you're even landing all that crap, though, then you don't need the tiger. You already won, or you already lost. Yeah, you're probably uh, maybe not the middle one card. Yeah. I don't. Maybe not even Spike Ridge Steed. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I don't else. know. I, yeah. I actually think none of these are probably gonna see play. Which is sad because it's like the legendary and like one of their like probably main build around epics. Yeah, it's just yeah the epic no. Shrivala, probably not. <laughs> well, now we have uh, the worst card uh, ever printed in the game. Surrender. We did it. I say that. I say that almost every set, but no, this one is actually the worst card ever printed in the game. Sorry, Prince Caliphas? Is that is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Prince? Is that what happened? Dude. Oh, sorry. First I had off, my, my glasses. First off. off, this should cost negative three mana. Yeah, it should give you three. It should give you three mana this turn you play it. It should the fact that it costs mana is offensive. This is unreal. I mean this is the worst card ever. Is it worse and than Milhouse? Priest? Oh yeah. Oh this this is this is actually worse than Milhouse because Milhouse they might not have a way to kill you immediately. This, this is, you just lose the game. Is this a this is like a joke. It's an epic? No, like it's actually the worst card ever. It's unreal. It's unreal. And they have, they have to print like a one mana minion that says if your mana crystals would be destroyed by an effect they aren't or something. If you would destroy a mana crystal instead deal 30 damage Gain to it. the opponent. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, it has to be because like, first off, Priest doesn't even give a shit about this effect. And then like three mana? Like, when are you casting this? Like, I can Not on turn this. three, obviously. And not on turn 10, because why the fuck is this in your deck on turn 10? Like, I can see this as, like, a Warlock card or something. I mean, it, it would have to be, like, destroy one of your mana crystals, but yeah. If it was if it was destroy three of your mana crystals and give all your minions plus two plus two, which counted the ones on the board. In play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, I could see that. But, like, like, maybe that wouldn't be good enough, like, whatever, but this... It would be as something. Yeah, it would be trying. This is, like, unreal. This is... And it's in Priest! It's in the class that wants it the actual least. Yeah, I just... Like, for sure. Like, for sure, this would have to be better. Like, or this, like, kind of effect would have to be better in every single other class. What if it was destroy three of your mana crystals, give all minions in your deck, plus ten, plus ten? <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, no, then it'd be a good late game card, right? Yeah. But, yeah, this is unbelievable. Like, it's... I think it's actually the worst card ever made. Yeah, it's got because. Be. It's one of the few cards that you actively lose the game by playing it. Man, this is brutal. All right, moving on. The worst card ever printed. They do that. Like, Ticking Abomination, that was, like, the first card they revealed for Knights of the Frozen Throne. That piece of fucking shit. And I love how people say, ooh, that turned out to be good because of this one combo. Now it's still a piece of shit. Actually, that combo is trash, so... <laughs> well, no, but even if that combo wasn't trash, like, it's yeah. still a piece of shit card just because... It happens to fit in some niche jank combo, like it doesn't ma it doesn't make the card good. Like a guard can see play and still be trash. Like. Yeah, right. Okay. Now we're for on example, here's a card that's trash and could see play. Counter barrage. Mm -hmm. It's really bad, but I mean, if there's enough ways to just get six pirates out, you're playing it. When's uh, patches back? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, the fact that this costs six, like literally, it's like. If you compare it to Greater Arcane Missiles, which is a good comparison because that card's a disaster and it's like one cheaper than that but requires some setup, um, 
that probably means it's a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you literally need, I think, five pirates out for this to be worth it. And you probably, if you have five pirates out, you probably already won. I just don't know why you want a six drop in such a, in such a case. Yeah. Like, literally, the only way this is going to see play if there's some cheap card that literally just shits out pirates. Maybe. And, and, and then you could just play this because, like, it's so easy to just always have a bunch of pirates. Like, if you just always had a bunch of pirates, like, if the Paladin Hero Power became make two fucking pirates every turn for free. Yeah, exactly. Then you could play this, but... Maybe uh, Skycap Craig, or, um... There's a new hero. Uh... Who's the Defias guy? Van Cleef. He's gonna be a hero now. He's yeah. He's the Defias pirate. Right. Yeah. Bunch of and next uh, we have... See, that card's probably bad. Uh, oh, yeah. the Spirit of the Shark. This is uh, one of the cycle cards. So every, every class... They kind of come up with, like, a new keyword for Stealth for One Turn. They're going to really write Stealth for One Turn on everything. Uh, they could have... they just... <laughs> Alright, here's the keyword. Uh, not Shitty Stealth. Couldn't they just call it, like, Cloak or something, or...? Uh, lights Out. Or, or, or maybe make them somehow, like, naturally lose Stealth next turn, like, without having to write it, like, through their... Like, maybe they do something next turn, because when you, like, lose stuff, you lose stealth. I don't know. It just seems really ugly that they're writing stealth for one turn on all these mm -hmm. cards. Like, I would have been really unhappy with that. Um, your minions battle cries and combos trigger twice. This is uh, a... It seems really bad, but... Bran, he's back. Yeah, except he's, like, class card, which already is really bad. I mean, doubling combos is new, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. I can see it's it. Card, I mean, it's four mana for 3 You probably just try to win. It's like the combo card. You try to win next turn or something. I don't get why they're printing this. Like, if the point is that, like, I think they kind of don't understand something because... If this card's worth playing, it's going to be because you get disgusting amounts of value or, or a win on your next turn, right? Oh. And if, it, if you don't, then it's just not going to be... You're, you would never go near this card. So why? what's the difference between it having stealth for one turn and just having stealth? Like, how many more turns after the first one are you ever going to play out with this in play? I would assume zero. I assume you just win. If you, ever, if you right, or, stick this. Right, like... Like, if they don't flame strike it or, or, or kill you or whatever, like, do you really... Or, like, you you do so many powerful things with the first turn that you just wipe their board and then they can't kill it anyway. Like, I don't know. I don't... Here's... Here, I'll, you'll find out the reason why it's stealth for one turn soon. Okay. Uh, I'm excited. The reason is I'm pretty sure they all have stealth for one turn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Like, whatever. We'll get to it. We'll... Okay, here we go. Rain of Toads. We got the Rain of Toads. Uh, so, they're... Of the van boring-ass vanilla cards that just have Overload, this one's a little more interesting. Because it's like army in a can kind of thing. Yep. Uh, I feel like... Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. I understand that technically it's an advantage. Like, if you wanted to say that... Um, three two fours with taunt is worth nine mana which i don't think it is but let's say it was then you could say well it's already an advantage to, to have it like this with the overload because you you know you get to play it sooner and you get it over two turns and while it's true wouldn't it be kind of nice if your class's main mechanic like gave you like a discount like what if it was overload two like let's say you determine this is worth nine mana why can't it be six mana overload two to make it like you know exciting for the shaman? Like wow, the shaman gets something like for like definitely less than everyone else. Yeah, they just why really... does that mean that you pay full price but over two turns? That's just so much less exciting, I think. It's just, I think this is sort of indicative of how they sort of don't understand overload. I mean, they they've historically just been totally tragically horrible about overload. Like, I mean, just see Sarah Knight Chain Gang and fucking. Spirit Wolf card, whatever the hell it's called. Mm -hmm. I mean, LOL. So, this is just like uh, another year, another set, another, the developers do not understand Overload. I mean, this one could technically see play just because 
I mean, Shaman likes putting guys on the board. Yeah. But but that has nothing to do with the fact that it's no, like an overload card or whatever. It's just because it's a card that puts multiple cards on the board for Except Shaman. They have, which they have like very little of, really. Right? Like, is there, like there's almost no cards that do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like very few. Very few. Uh, I'm trying to think of some. There's the Spirit Wolf card, which is yeah. just, it's so brutally, uh, like, overcosted, though, that it's not very good. Yeah, so, it should, it really should be just Overload, too. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that would make it definitely powerful if it was Overload 2 instead of 3, but, like, good? It's their classic <laughs> cast? Shouldn't it be powerful? Shouldn't cards be useful? It's hard to say. You know, that's a question we ask ourselves every day. Should cards be useful? Like, I mean, like, here's my thing, is... If your goal is to make every card fair, like as in every card is quote unquote on rate with each other, that's fine. But that leaves you really little margin for error. But if you're going to say, okay, the unique class cards are all going to be a little bit OP, then that, I think, number one, gives them all more different texture when you're playing with them and different flavor. And it gives you a little more wiggle room because, okay, yeah, this is going to be a little good, but uh, hopefully everyone else has something a little good. Otherwise, if you try to make everything on rate, then you end up with Druid. And, uh, yeah. oops. I think it opens up more design space as well. Yeah. You can make the class cards. Like, you can't you can't have Lightning Bolt in Magic the Gathering uh, unless you're willing to say that uh, colors, unique mechanics, or, you know, like, the things they're the best at are going to be more powerful than on rate cards. Mm -hmm. And Lightning Bolt's awesome, so. Yeah, so. Disappointing with Rain and Tones, I think. Warlock. Uh, okay, well, competition for worst card in the game. <laughs> Void contract. Now, I understand that you can't have this card cost a little bit of mana because then it really would make combo like. Like, if this costs like three mana, then, like, if combo decks are good, then Warlocks to just pay three mana and win the game, like, you, every time. Well, you can combo this to make it cost life instead. Ooh. With Blood Boom, right? Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> um, but, like, okay, so I get that, like, you don't want this card to be cheap, but that brings me to my next point. Why the hell does this exist at all? I have no clue. Well, how is this fun for anyone ever? I assume it's not going to be fun for anyone. How could it ever be fun? Like, what is fun about this? Like, literally, if they refuse to print hand discard... Uh, which you know, they kind of did with the uh, Demonic Project. But if they refuse to print explicit hand discard, then why are you printing this? It's just as unfun. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. one specific type of deck. Yeah. And I think the art like is fucked up too. This doesn't look like a Void Contract. Yeah, I would assume that's the updated art for Shadow Bolt. Yeah, <laughs> is this like Shadow Blast? Shadow Laser? Yeah, Shadow, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, a big F. Yeah. Oh, we got the bat. Eight mana, one one. That's are we, already. Always are we exciting. back in Mean Streets? Are we hand buff yeah. warlock? Yeah. Well, dude, if you just land the stupid soul infusion on this thing, that's like if your deck doesn't have AOEs, I think you just die. <laughs> I mean, granted, eight mana means that you might not. You, you can't play this in. Z no. Eight mana is just too much. Not but a um, but if there's some more mid rangey thing, which there probably won't be, but if there was, like this card, if your deck doesn't happen to line up well against it, you just lose. Because yeah. it literally like whatever stats it has, it's times fucking seven. That's a lot of that's a lot of power. That's a lot of juice yeah. that he could pull out. Yeah. So like it's, I think. This is also a really unfun card because um, it's really slow and maybe you just die. Or if you get it out, they either play like Dragon's Fury and you're really sad. Or they can't possibly answer and they just die immediately. Seems, seems the way they're going. Maybe with like, I, don't, I don't see where this is leading to fun gameplay. Maybe just fun for the player, Warlock player. Right. Because they get to win right away. Right. And then we got his combo card. <laughs> Kelseth, is that you? <laughs> Kelseth, what? Uh, this doesn't look as good as Kelseth to me. It's that's weird. It's weird that um, Spear of the Bat seems a little bit worse than Prince Kelseth's 
Okay, it's really blowing my mind that, like, so I'm still to this day sticking by the only reason that Calisthenics play is because two drops suck. Yeah. And, like, I really believe that. I really don't think that the card is so good that it's worth skipping out on all these awesome two drops for it. I agree. Um, but then to remedy that, they're printing just the worst two drops I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they love – everyone loves the prints, okay? Like it's like they it's like they demand that everyone only plays him at this point. It's weird. This thing like is, this card sucks. It's unreal how shitty it is. Why, why is, would you play this? Why is it just any minion? Just for something. Cause then it might actually be like good. Sweet. Like Wouldn't that be nice if something might actually be good? <laughs> no, it would be, be terrible. <laughs> just pure garbage I it's really so bad. hopefully you're you're seeing why we're trying to get um bite-sized chunks here because yeah because i'm this, already almost this, tapped out this first chunk is uh it's got oh some strong God. flavor i'll just say that strong yeah, a, meaty flavor uh, oh no okay we go to the big daddy oh yeah so let's raise the lasher oh, which yeah. i always get to drop for me on my uh random alts from uh what is that dual not Zulamon, Zul Grub? something. No, not Zul Garub either. Zul Farak. Farak, there you go. Yeah. That's where this drops. Zul to raise the lasher. You you get there's two blue swords. You put them together. Oh and you yeah. Zul to raise the lasher, baby. Hell yeah. One of the first epics that in Vanilla WoW that you could uh, ever equip on like a uh, warrior or something like that. Hell hell yeah. Uh, so I already love Sulth Rays. Although they're missing the little, there's little two floaty dark orbs that are supposed to swirl around it, like around the middle of the blade, which are not in the start for some reason, which is kind of disappointing. That's a good point. Um, I don't know why you would exclude that when it's literally like an object from WoW, but especially because that's one of the things that made it really unique is that it like has this like cool unique particle effect, which like in vanilla WoW, a particle effect on your weapon, holy shit, was that rare? That's true. Yeah, thinking about it, there wasn't much. Um, so as far as the card itself goes, um, so Fool's Bane was nasty in Arena, but didn't do shit in Constructed, and this is just a more versatile but expensive version of that? Yeah. I don't think it'll do anything. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. I feel like it's, like, too much. I mean, the problem with a card, like, the problem with Fool's Bane, the problem with this is that, um... On a big weapon, it, like, if you're actually getting value out of the fact that it has big attack, you're probably taking a shit ton of damage clearing the stuff. Yeah. Like, a lot of damage. <laughs> Too much. Like, if if you had a 3-mana 2-4 weapon with, you know, the Fool's Bane effect, that might see play because you use it to kill all the weenies and when the big you don't die. Out. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. But if you're hitting a bunch of things that have like five attack, right? If you're hitting yeah, a bunch of things that have four life, probably have four attack also. Yeah. Uh, so you're just doming yourself, and also overkill means that you have to hit things with three. That's actually not that many things. This card sucks. Yeah. Disappointing. Sorry, still threes. Yeah, we're on zero for two for uh, the over cards. Into I mean, again, the hunter one probably will see some play. This one will not see play. But we're over two anyway. All right. And our last card. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the fan. This is a rogue class card, I guess, because it only synergizes. Dude, why do they keep doing this? <laughs> like, do they understand how frustrating it is when this is the best of your three cards you're given in a major arena deck? Like, like what the fuck? I don't get it. Uh, like, why? Just make it a class card. Make it any one of the classes that attacks. Just pick one. How about Rogue? Because there are, seems to be about the pirates. Like, Yeah, Rogue seems to be about pirates, so it's it's got to be... Like, in WoW, they have, like, the the spec that has a gun. Right. Oh, yeah, we were just talking about this before. There's already two class cards for Rogue in the game that are not Rogue class cards. Auctioneer and the Hench Clan Thug. Yep. Like... Those are rogue class cards. Just make them rogue class cards. Oh, there's also that. There's that two two for two that gives you plus one damage on your weapon. Yes, that's they a rogue, three class, rogue card. class card. Yeah, there's so another dude. It's always rogue, right? Is yeah. it like literally always rogue? I think so. And that they do this with. 
yeah, so it's a rogue class card, and it's just not printed that way. I don't know why. I guess they don't want other classes to feel bad. Hey, how come rogue got 12 class cards and we only got 11? <laughs> it's cheap. Yeah, let's make one of them neutral. Fuck it. Like, I think that's what they do, right? They, they they probably designed this as a rogue class card and said, oh, shit, there's too many rogue class cards we want to print. Oh, let's make one of them that maybe could be neutral, neutral. But this is not the one. <laughs> oh, I could put it I, in my like, warrior deck. Oh, whatever, like, it dude. really, it just pisses me off that, like, I mean, cards that reference your weapon or your hero attacking when half the class in the game literally can't do that without, like, some craziness going on. Yeah. So, like, is like, just wrong. stupid. I agree. Like, it's just bad design. Like, there's no... Just just stick them in the class. Who cares? Like, is Priest going to be sad they can't play this card? Are you going to be really sad that you couldn't put it in your Priest deck? You're going to be on. happy that it'll never show up in your fucking arena pool. Exactly. Same with Warlock. You know? Right. Like, you never want to see this. Right. <sighs> Alright. Like, I don't get it. Like, I, they, they do this all the time. With Rogue, though. Like, it's just... I, <laughs> Listen, all right. So, Valera did something. I don't know what she did. I don't know what she told the devs, but they yeah. take away her class cards as punishment constantly every expansion. And they replace it with unplayable trash. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow she makes yeah. it through. Yeah. Uh, I think while we while we have time, since these are now short episodes, we could talk about the state of the game, and. Uh, Wow, what a game it is. They so, really... First off, let's talk about uh, their style of balance, which is to nuke things from, from Orbit. Now, I think nuking a card that's like new and hasn't been around for a while, I actually think that that's okay if you're convinced that it needs the nuke. Like, you want to nuke Giggling Inventor? You know what? Fine. Whatever. But you nuke Mana Worm? That was brutal. You bet that card is like iconic. I had I had two gold mana worms, which I mean I was great to get my dust refund, but like and I don't I don't collect gold cards, but like I happen to since beta have stumbled across two gold mana worms because like fuck yeah, I mean every you know you're gonna play mana worms, so I might as well have gold ones. But um like Fiery War Axe, this, um to some extent like Force of Nature, like these cards Move them to wild if you have to, but don't delete them. Yeah, it's so sad. Mana Worm was like an iconic card. I didn't even make yeah. it into every deck. It was only like some decks that played it. It was an aggro decks. And to to delete a card like that from your game, I think is really sad, especially when it's been there for so long. Been there since like, like what happens if true uh, true skiller gets slightly too high of a win rate? Or see slightly too much play. They're just going to nuke True Skiller? Like, Make it cost five? Like, get yeah, the fuck like, out of here? Yeah, like, what? Like, Same with the Warax. Like, just, like, I don't get it. They already have, like, the kind of elegant solution to cards that just win too much in standard, which is move them to wild. Yep. Hall of Fame. Like, that's, that's a totally fine solution, I think. Mm-hmm. I agree. It, if, it, if the data shows that it, it's warranted. Mm-hmm. But, like... But like what you instead of moving this to wild, you moved it to the trash bin. Like, like what? What? Why? Like you paid for the art. You paid for everything. People like and it. people like the card. Like it's been around forever. Same with fire. I was always upset about fiery war axe. Yeah, I was too. That was actually why I felt like fire war axe was the start of when Prince Kellis started being seen play. Yeah, right. So, but like fiery war axe. Like it or not, was the weapon of the game. It was the one that everyone had access to because it was like a basic card. And everyone uh, got used to seeing it all the time. And was it really powerful and defining for Warrior? Yeah. But if that was too much for Standard and they wanted more open room for Standard decks, then you Hall of Fame it. But instead... Now it's in the Hall of Nowhere. Yeah, the Hall of Trash. And that's such a sad fate for such a sweet card. Like, it was the Warrior card. The Warrior is the weapon guy. He's got the good... He's got um, 
he's got the big axe. And it like it like matched Reaper. like the hero right. like art. Like it like literally looked like it was drawn to be the weapon you always have. Right. Yeah, like everything was like perfect about it. And now it's just it's gone. It's gone from the game. And I think that's really sad. I don't know if other people think that way. Some people probably don't. They just view the cards as cards, but for me, it's like part of the soul of the game is gone. Yes. Like, I mean, obviously, if you didn't play the game back then, then you can't possibly be attached to a card like this. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, this stuff, like, imagine if Wizards of the Coast came out and said, so Black Lotus is now going to cost three mana. <laughs> like, we're eroding it <laughs> to cost three mana. Like, how would that go over with people? And now you might say, oh, these are not Black Lotus. I mean, maybe not in terms of monetary value, but in terms of attachment, I I'd actually argue, yeah. yeah I agree. People have been playing with these cards for years. Yeah, literal years. Many, many years. And, and yes, they do care. Yeah, Mana Worm is just... It's brutal. It was... Yeah, so uh, that's our eulogy to the Mana Worm and or why to Blizzard for deleting an iconic card. Again, you do want to delete Giggling Inventor. That has barely been around. It's not a big deal. No one really liked it. They just yeah, I mean, it just sweet. pissed people off. I mean, it was powerful. Oh, also, I think while we're on this topic, we need to go over... Um, they need to chill with the brutal random tech cards. Like, the amount of games... In this expansion I played, that have been just violently ended by Masihar. Oh, yeah. He is the, f the fucker. But the thing is, like, you can't really play around a card like that. Like... Yeah, the deck he beats, you go all in. And... I don't know. He stuffs... But then also in Arena, like, mm -hmm. uh, I've lost, or won, like, literally, I've seen no less. I've probably only played maybe 30 Arena games this season, because I just don't play this game a lot. Um, because it's just so silly, the balance specifically. Um, but the um, I've just seen so many blowouts in Arena. Like, I had a literal unlosable board position where I just had, I had like two poisonous taunt guys. I had all sorts of shit. Like, I was threatening like a two-turn clock. But all my guys had two or less attack. Oh, surprise. Uh, my deck has Mossy Har, so you lose the game. Like, was that interesting? Like, was that fun? Like, no. did he even keep, like, it's not like he, ke like, it, there's not even any strategy, though, is the thing. It's not like, oh, I'm going to keep Mossy hard because my opponent's going to play a lot of two attack. Like, you don't know. Like, there's no skill. He has no thought to it. And you basically just drop so, him when you, when you get him. Like, when you turn, come right. turn six. Yeah, like, the second is good, you just, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no reason... It's also to have a card like that. Like it's the same thing with that um, EMP operative. Uh, right. From he, she does the same thing. Either it's like an absurd blowout, or like oh that was fun. Or, right. Yeah, and then I mean bossy horror is worse, but it's the same vein of idea. Yeah, like these, but like I think bossy horror they just overreach because it's such a generic requirement. Like, at least with the EMP thing, like, you could maybe, um, I don't know, uh, maybe, like, I don't want to say be more aware of its existence, but, like, because it, it, maybe it's way too general also. But, like, I at least think back to Big Game Hunter, you could kind of know that they have a Big Game Hunter. Yeah. And you could kind of play around it by not playing your big guy and trying to force them to play it. Um, but, like, Mossy, like, decks just randomly have shit that has two attack or less. Yeah, that's not what you it, can do. Yeah. Or, or same with uh, Blood Knight. That's another one. Like, you want to talk about cards from the classic game that are screwing up design space. Like, I was trying to play an elemental deck. So I just played a Tolvir Stone Shaper, right? Great. Oh, no. Yeah. And oh, then the aggro no. deck... 
like, which I figured no one would play Blood Knight anymore, right? Because now no one plays Giggling Inventor, so not we won't play Blood Knight, right? Oh, he just he still was. Maybe he didn't get the memo. <laughs> uh, so the game's over. You just lose. You just immediately lose the game. Like you can't have a three mana six six that took away their defense. <laughs> like. And that's not that's not made better by the fact that that happens once in twenty games. It's made worse because now it's just totally random. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't expect it, and then that twenty game just is way more feel the bad. That twentieth game. Yeah. Yeah. You could change like, Blood Knight slightly uh, for every minion with divine shield gain plus three plus three, but don't suck it away. Or no, yeah. it, honestly, if you want to make that card fucking fair, it should say. Uh, either it's just a three mana three three that removes divine shield, sure. Or you gain plus two plus two for each divine shield in play. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Like yeah, you get a three mana five five if they have a divine shield guy. Okay. That's like that's like still like a tech card against divine shield. Though. That's still way above rate. Mm-hmm. But at least it's not like an absurd. But as it is, just delete your opponent. Yeah. If they have any sort of divine shield, yeah. Probably should be Hall of Famed. <laughs> I'm just. Glad I, I think it should just be nerfed. That, that one, I think you could just nerf because that one is not an iconic card. It's not even a class card. Yeah, um, Blood Knight was always sort of a weirdo. You never saw him much. He's only yeah, like, started showing up this expansion because of giggling. Right. And then people realize, huh? If they ever have a Divine Shield guy, you just kind of win the game if this goes. On. <laughs> like that's and that's the other thing, right? Is Swing cards, swing cards are okay. I'm not saying you can't have cards that swing the game, but I think they should be first off class specific, which both of those cards aren't. And secondly, they should be high mana cost, like flame strike. Right? How many times in arena, especially in the olden days, when people actually had more flame strikes in their deck? I guess now, actually, with the new system, people have flame strikes again. But. Um, <laughs> But um, how many times did you play around a flame strike and then win? Like, quite a bit, actually. I mean, sometimes you didn't have enough gas. But there are definitely times where you go, okay, he's going to get to 7 mana. I can put enough pressure out where he's going to have to flame strike, but I won't lose all my, like, gas and all my reload. Right. And then I'll put more on the board. Or, like, another one way back in the day, this is a real throwback, but was playing around the old 8 mana mind control. Hey. Where you go, okay. So you go, okay, well, I'm going to try to win the board, but I'm going to try to win the board without having one minion be way bigger than the other ones. So he has to mind control something really medium, and then I could beat him. Mm-hmm. And that was expensive, and you could play around it. Like, how do you play around turn three Blood Knight? <laughs> like, you cannot. Like, how do you play around Mossy Har in Arena when you have no idea they have a Mossy Har? Like, you don't. And because it's neutral, you can't really play around it and construct it either. I mean, yeah, you can kind of know that they they might have a, a good chance of running it, but, like, you don't know, no. Yeah, it's pretty... Like, these brutal swing cards in neutral. And they're, and they're, I think the emphasis there is on brutal. These are not weak cards. These are insanely strong. Yeah, Mossy Horror really blows you out of the water if it hits you. Yeah. I think like, like every if it time wipes your play, board. Yeah, every time like, I see you play it, like ladder, when I play it, it's just like it's the booty smasher. It, it's the it's the play that if you look back on it is the one that won the game. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the adios amigo. So like those cards, I think they need to really avoid that design. So we'll see how they do with that in this expansion. Um, is neutrals specifically that swing the game and are cheap? Um, they might avoid it. It's not every expansion they do this. Right. So. Uh, and then we'll have to see, as usual, if they actually print playable cards. And now, as as we found out, if you print only unplayable cards for a long time, then we have to change our metric of what's playable. <laughs> yeah, shit rotates out, and then you're like, uh... Well, I guess all this unplayable shit, you gotta play something. <laughs> I can't just run 20 yeah. cards? No. Yeah. No way, dude. So, so fair play to them on that. Yeah, they got us. Eventually, they got us because they just kept only printing up. They were, the they've been watching 100% garbage reviews for yeah. the entire time, and they are like, these guys think these cards are unplayable? Yeah, well, wait till you see what we print next. <laughs> <laughs> these cards are going to look fucking great. Fuck these guys. 
<laughs> All right, so um, that's so, enough. Yeah, okay, real quick. Let's just, we're going to do a prediction. Of these cards, uh, top two that are going to see play. Top two. Top two. I think it's a very clear. I think my top two is no doubt in my mind about my top two. Top two. Uh, I think top one, one of them, I think, is going to be <laughs> Surrender to Madness. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna say uh, spring paw. Yeah, that's gotta be number one, right? Yeah, spring paw, and uh, probably rain of toads. Yeah, that was my one and two. All right, we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I'll be playing the card I'm most likely to play is Hex Lord <laughs> <laughs> for my quest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, uh, uh, okay. Uh, what if what if Kel- oh, Here's the question from chat. What if Kelisas rotates and people still don't play two drops? <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna <laughs> play no two drops. Yeah. They're just gonna hero power on turn two. Think about that. Uh, chew on that, and then so we're gonna end this bite-sized chunk. Whew, it was um, a lot of garbage to swallow down, but uh, I'm really glad we chose this format. <laughs> I didn't uh, look at these, and oh man, I'm I'm ready to call it quits. So I think we timed it well. Yeah, it's it's gonna be hard. Hard to swallow. Hopefully, the next uh, seventeen or so cards are a little bit tastier than these. We had some good flavors, and then we had the worst uh, flavor I've ever tasted in my life. So I think I think actually, Surrender to Madness should have another line of text that says "Add a Concede to Madness in your hand," yeah. and it's a ten mana card that makes your opponent concede the game because <laughs> they deserve to lose. You get to ten mana after that. Yeah. Uh, why does this destroy all your mana crystals? <laughs> I give your deck plus plus for each Christmas right? Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, Forbidden Madness. Yep. They get a Forbidden card. Just wipes out all your mana. Hell yeah. All right. See, now, now you're talking. <laughs> now we're going hardcore. No, it gives you, um, for every mana crystal destroyed, gives all your minions, regardless of where they are, plus two, plus two. So if you do it on ten, everyone gets plus twenty. Plus, plus 20. twenty. Hell yeah. yeah. That's, they kill them. Yeah. Okay. That's still probably weaker than just Divine Spirit in it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's fucking cooler. Anyway, that's cooler. that's the end of this stream because it's so bad. All right, have a good. That's night. all we can take.